What is going on? It's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. In the previous videos, we talked about skeletal muscle, the microscopic structure of these muscles, the difference between muscles, muscle fibers, myofibrils, myofilaments, sarcomeres, etc. And we compared among skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles, and smooth muscles. In today's video, we'll talk about the mechanism of muscle contraction. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Let's go back to square one. Here is a cholinergic nerve fiber. Why do you call it cholinergic? Because it releases acetylcholine. This is a lower motor neuron which started in the spinal cord. There you will find the cell body and then the axon is going to extend outwards out of the spinal cord until we end up with the axon terminus or axon terminalis which contains some lovely vesicles which contain acetylcholine which is our neurotransmitter. Let's excite this nerve fiber. Sodium influx, hashtag depolarization, hashtag activation, which will activate the voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium channels open, calcium delves into the neuron axon terminalis, calcium is the hero of contraction, calcium will contract and squeeze and rupture those vesicles. Phew! They will release acetylcholine by exocytosis going to exit the nerve terminus. Now acetylcholine is here in the synaptic cleft between the nerve and the muscle. Acetylcholine will search for its receptor like a key in a lock, like a truck in a dock. Acetylcholine is going to bind to the acetylcholine receptor which is a nicotinic sub M receptor which is present on the skeletal muscle such as your biceps. Now your biceps will get activated and it will start contraction. What's the name of all of this? You can call it the neuromuscular junction or the motor end plate. Out of all of this craziness, where is the cell? This is the muscle cell, the muscle fiber. Each muscle is made of muscle fibers. Here's your actual cell. Each muscle fiber is made of myofibrils. Each myofibrils is made of myofilaments. Some of them are thin, actin. Some of them are thick, myosin. How about the intermediate filaments? This is desmin in your muscles. Here is actin, thin. Here is myosin, thick myofilaments, which are here inside the sarcomere, which is the distance between two successive Z line. Sarcomere, 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 sarcomere. Before you know it, there is the myofibril. Myofibril, 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 myofibril. Bundle them together. Before you know it, this is the muscle fiber. And then bundle them together. Here is a muscle fascicle. Bundle the fascicles together. Here is your skeletal muscles, such as your biceps, which is stretched between the tendon of origin and the tendon of insertion. Your lovely muscle cell is covered and enveloped by the sarcolimal sheath. Just like how your nerve fiber was covered by a neurolimal sheath. See, it makes sense. Here's the structure. If you have any problem here, please refer to previous videos. Let's go. What is this? This is the I band around the Z line. The I band is light because it contains actin fibers only. Actin is thin. Actin is shiny. Actin is isotropic because it's thin, because it's shiny. How about the A band? The A band is dark. It is anisotropic because it contains myosin, 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 and don't forget the actin as well. How about the H zone? It's called Hela in German. Hela means lighter. Lighter than what? Than the A band. Why? Because the H zone only contains one type of fibers, myosin only, unlike the A band, which contained myosin and actin. At the edges of the myosin, there is your tubular system, the T tubule. Why T? Because it's a transverse tubule, it traverses the thickness of your muscle. If you follow the T tubule downwards, you will find the calcium jail. Calcium is imprisoned? Yes. What's the name of that prison? The county jail. I mean, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That's the jail of the calcium. And the jail is engineered in this pattern. There is a transverse structure here. And then you have two terminal swellings known as terminal cistern. What if I want to release the calcium from its jail? You will need to open two doors. The first door is here. The second door is here. What's the name of the first door? Ryanidine receptor. 
What's the name of the second door? Dihydropyridine receptor channel. How do I get both doors to open? You have to get me an impulse down the T-tubule. What kind of impulse? Nerve impulse. Electrochemical stuff. As you know, the nerve impulse is unidirectional. There is a delay at the synaptic cleft. The synapse can get tired because of repetitive stimulation, because we ran out of vesicles, basically. Calcium is the hero of contraction. It's also the hero of transmission. But too much magnesium will decrease it. And don't forget, one of the causes of hypocalcemia is hypomagnesemia. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. If you want to learn more about medications, check out my autonomic nervous system course on my website. Now let's talk about contraction because I want this muscle to contract. So we start here. Sodium will enter into the nerve fiber. Hashtag sodium influx. Hashtag depolarization. Hashtag activation. Action potential is unidirectional. Until we activate the axon terminalis, Calcium will enter. Calcium is the hero of contraction. Pew! Ruptured the vesicle by exocytosis. Acetylcholine is here in the cleft. Acetylcholine is gonna bind its acetylcholine receptor, which is a nicotinic receptor. Now, this membrane is activated. Hashtag depolarize. How can I get the impulse from the outside to the core of the muscle? This is the story of the T-tubules. When the nerve impulse travels down the T-tubules, it's gonna open the doors for the calcium. Calcium is gonna exit its jail. Calcium is gonna help myosin and actin attract each other. Boom, you get contraction. Hey, Medicosis, can I block this neuromuscular junction? Yes, indeed. This is the name of a poison known as Corari. It's not just a poison, it's a drug. Anesthesiologist can give you Corari to block your neuromuscular junction because they want to knock you unconscious, that's number one, and to paralyze your muscles so that the surgeon can work on you. Corari can be found in nature. The story of the discovery of Corari was discussed before in my anesthesiology playlist. Corari or tubocorarine or vincuronium enicuronium corari is a neuromuscular blocker. It prevents muscle contraction. It causes muscle paralysis. Back to muscle contraction. Sodium influx first. Calcium influx second. Acetylcholine exocytosis third. Acetylcholine is gonna bind the nicotinic receptor fourth. And then T tubule and then calcium is released from the jail and then myosin is gonna bind actin. Myosin cross bridges will pull actin closer to the midline. The entire sarcomere will shorten. The entire myofibril will shorten. The entire muscle fiber will shorten. Your entire muscle will shorten, bringing the insertion closer to the origin. Hashtag contraction. The action potential went to the muscle membrane. Down the T-tubule we go until we open the two doors for the calcium to release the calcium from the jail. Let's open the first door, ryanodine receptor, and the second door, dihydropyridine receptor. Calcium will leave the jail. Calcium will go to the T-tubule until calcium binds to troponin C which unlocks and removes the guard of the jail so that myosin cross bridges can extend from myosin to actin, pull the actin closer to the midline, shorten the sarcomere, hashtag contraction. This is an active process that requires ATP. Do you remember the light bulb? Yes. Which one happens first, electricity or light emission? Of course, electricity. The electric current has to come first. Exactly. Depolarization has to happen first, and then muscle contraction will happen later. Please don't forget that the action potential follows the all or none law. I'm either on or off. There is no sorta kinda ish. I'm either generated or not generated. There is no 50% generated, 70%. Uh, there is no, I, I don't, I don't do that. I don't play these games. 
And don't forget that we have an absolute refractory period where no nerve impulse is gonna propagate no matter how hard you try, no matter how strong the stimulus is. And we have a relative refractory period, which means the action potential is not gonna propagate. But if you give me a super duper super stimulus, I might be able to propagate. Please refer to my physiology playlist in the section about nerve physiology to learn more about this. Let's review myosin. Remember the two heavy chains and the four light chains. Don't forget that the two heads have binding site to bind actin, ATP binding site, and a catalytic ATPase activity to release the energy necessary for contraction. Here is the myosin structure, pause and review. And here is the actin structure, thin filaments. Actin is covered by tropomyosin. How can we remove the tropomyosin? How can we remove the guard? Calcium has to come, has to come out of the two doors. And then calcium is gonna bind troponin C. Troponin C is gonna unlock and remove the guard known as tropomyosin. Now actin is exposed, myosin is gonna bind actin, by extending the cross bridges, which extend from the myosin to the actin, bring me closer to the midline, hashtag contraction. This was a very brief discussion. To learn more, please check my physiology playlist where we go into deeper details. Next, let's talk about muscle metabolism. Whether you eat carbohydrates, proteins, or lipids, the end result is acetyl-CoA. Bring me into the TCA cycle in the mitochondria, followed by the electron transport chain, and this is cellular metabolism or cellular respiration. Muscles need energy, no kidding. Where do we get the energy from? Well, it depends. Are you talking during rest, during contraction, or after contraction, during recovery? During rest, we will use the ATP that we have. Hey, medicosis, why do you need energy during rest? Because even during rest, your muscles have a tone. Otherwise, you will fall. Even your blood vessels have a tone during rest. Don't forget, resting membrane potential was dependent on the sodium potassium ATPase. This is active right here. So you need energy even during rest. And you need energy during rest to make glycogen, which is a big molecule of a bunch of glucose molecules lumped together. What is the energy currency of the cell, including the muscle cell, ATP, adenosine triphosphate? This is the chemical structure. Please pause and review. If you cut the first phosphate, this is ordinary energy. If you cut the second or the third, high energy. How do I cut it? You need ATPase activity to break down the ATP into ADP and release the energy. Where do I get the ATPase from? Remember that your myosin head contained ATPase activity. This ATPase will not start to work until you release calcium from the jail. And calcium will not be released from the jail until I see an action potential coming down the T-tubules. That was the story of muscles during rest. Next, muscles during contraction. Where do we get the energy from? First of all, let me tell you that if you have been contracting for a while, e.g. running a marathon, you will run out of oxygen and you will shift from aerobic to anaerobic metabolism. That's not fun. Because if you are in the anaerobic land, the mitochondria will not be able to function. So what do I do then? During strenuous exercise, in the beginning, you will use the ATP that was already there, the preformed ATP. All right. And then after this, what do I do? Break down the ATP and remake ATP from ADP and P. This is the story of creatinine kinase. That's the substrate. And the enzyme is known as creatinine phosphokinase. All of this is called the phosphagen system, which will cover you in the first 15 to 20 seconds. How about the first minute? Well, you will need more. You will need some glycolysis, which does not require oxygen, by the way. Glycolysis will give you a net of 2 ATP. But hey, medicosis, I'm running a marathon. I need more than one minute worth of energy. Then you will need oxidative phosphorylation. You will need Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. And you need oxygen for this. After you run the marathon, have you noticed something? You're still tired. You're still hyperventilating like this. <laughs> Even though you stopped running, have you ever wondered why? This is the story of the oxygen debt. 
and it went like this. Imagine this scenario between the muscle and the lungs. They have a dialogue with each other. The muscle said the following. Hey, if you want me to run the race, I need 500 mLs of oxygen. This is just a hypothetical number. And the lung said, you know what? I can only provide you with 400 mLs of oxygen during the race. I cannot go more than this. Uh, you will break me. Then the muscle did strike a deal with the lung. The muscle said, okay, I will take the 400 mLs during the race. But after the marathon, you owe me 100 mLs. Okay, bet. And that's why you're still hyperventilating even after you stopped running, because the lungs are paying their debt back. The lungs are breathing the 100 ml to give them to the muscle. What's the purpose of that debt? Why do you need extra 100 ml even after running the race? Re, re, re. Reformation of ATP, reformation of creatinine phosphate. Removal of lactic acid, refilling of the myoglobin with oxygen. Don't forget that myoglobin binds one molecule of oxygen, unlike hemoglobin, which can bind four. There are two types of muscle fibers in your body, type 1 and type 2. Every human being on earth has both types. To understand type 1, think of an ox. To understand type 2, think of a chicken. As you see, the ox is darker in color, red fibers. The chicken is lighter, pale fibers. The ox is running the mill, walking slowly and slowly and slowly for a long period of time. The muscle fibers are very small in size. Look at these teeny tiny slender legs, innervated by small slow motor neurons. Yes, the ox is working the mill slowly. However, the ox does not tire easily. Contrast that with the chicken. The chicken is very fast. Chicken is flapping her wings, flap, 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 very fast, but the chicken will tire easily. Why is the ox resistant to fatigue, relatively speaking? Because the red fibers have more myoglobin, more mitochondria, more blood supply. Conversely, type 2 or fast twitch or pale fibers have less mitochondria, less myoglobin, less blood supply. And of course, if you have more mitochondria and more myoglobin, you will appear darker. Duh. Hey, medicosis in my own body, give me example of red fibers your back muscles and your soleus muscles. Your back muscles do not tire easily. Think of a security guard standing for eight hours straight. Contrast that with fast twitch fibers like your extraocular muscles or your hand muscles. Yes, they are fast, but they tire easily. If you don't believe me, try blinking quickly for five minutes straight and you will see how hard it is. If you like this video, you will love my renal physiology course and my autonomic pharmacology course. You can download them on my website, medicosisperfectsnetics.com. I also have other courses like antibiotics, cardiac pharmacology, toxicology, general pharmacology, and many others. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Schnellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.